Hi there, I'm going to show you how you can create a really lovely looking pricing table that you can use within your WordPress pages. One that looks just like this that we're looking at. Uh, this is built using the Gutenberg block editor and the Gutenberg Pro plugin that we've developed over at Poodle Press. Uh, so here we go. Right, so I'm going to take you step by step, nice and slowly, um, through all the steps you need to go through to create a nice like um, looking pricing table, just like the one we're looking at up on the screen. Now to start with, I'm going to go to the edit page here just to show you how this one's been built and then I'm going to recreate it from scratch just so you can see how easy it is to, to create something like this. So let me go to edit page and we'll just look at how this one's been built first. Um, now all this, all, all I've done here is basically I've added um, the Gutenberg columns block within this page, a three columns. So the, the columns block, as I'll show you in a few minutes, is a standard Gutenberg block. And then I've customized the background color and changed the gap. Okay. Now, if I click on the column itself, you'll see over here I've got some settings that let me basically customize the background of just that column. Now, these aren't normally available in the block editor. These settings we've added uh, within our Gutenberg Pro plugin, which gives you a whole ton of extra functionality on the core Gutenberg block. So it's really cool because it doesn't add extra blocks in. It just lets you customize the standard blocks. So it's very, very powerful and also keeps your site really fast. And you see all I've done on this one is I've set the background color to a custom color, which is this color here, which I'm gonna just steal because I want to reuse it, okay? And then you'll see each column is the same. And then within each column, I've got extra blocks, okay? Now, one of the beauties about the columns block is that it allows you to put blocks within it. And you can see the hierarchy by clicking on these three lines just up here. So if I click on those, that shows you the outline of those blocks. This is really useful when you're working within the columns block because it shows you like the hierarchy of your blocks. Um, so you see here I've got the top level column, which is the whole thing, all three columns. But within that I've got this one first column, which is the left hand column, this column here, which is the middle column, the sort of yellow column here, and this third column down here, which is the one over on the right. So if I want to edit um, the first column, I just click on that column there and you see how it's highlighted it. So now I can edit that one. If I want to edit the middle one, you can either click on it, but if you're in any doubt, you can also do it here. Okay, and then over here, I could change the background color of that column if I wanted to. Okay, so hopefully that shows you how the columns block works or how it works with <coughs> the additional plugin that we've built called Gutenberg Pro. It's very powerful. So let me just recreate this so you can see just how easy it is. So I'm going to start off by adding just the uh, columns block into this page. So I'm just going to search for columns up here and it finds the columns block and I'm going to click on it to add it into the page. And now it's going to ask me how many columns I want and what proportion I want in my columns. So I want three columns equally sized. So I'm going to choose that option there. And that just sets my basic grid layout. And now I'm going to start to customize. Um, I'm going to start by customizing the background color, as we can see here. Now, again, if you're in any doubt, just use these selectors up here to choose which column you want to customize. Okay, I want the first one. And then over on the right, we'll see I've got these additional settings. This is the Gutenberg Pro settings that let me change the color. So I'm going to put in my cus a custom color in this case. And you'll see over on the left here how that color's now changed. Okay, and again, I could do it for these other ones if I wanted to at the same time. Now, the way I'm gonna build this, which is a good sort of quick tip on this, is I'm gonna build the first block and then I'm gonna duplicate it for speed and then make certain changes within it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the first one roughly right. So we start off with just a heading block, I think. That's all we've got. So I'm gonna copy that text there and I'm gonna click on this plus sign and I could search for a block here, uh, but you'll see it, it should show you the heading block anyway. And then I'm just going to paste that in. Okay. And then the only thing I need to do here is, a, is to center that like so. Looking good. Okay. And then I've got this bit of text under here. And to do that, you can either click on this plus sign here, or you can just hit return. I'm going to click on the plus sign and it's just, I think it's just a paragraph block. I'm going to add that in. And then all I do is I center it like so, okay? And then I've got this uh, tick here with a bit of text next to it. Now for those ticks, 
I actually generated those by going to this website, emojipedia.org, where you can search for um, like icons and emojis. And then it will just show you the emoji down here and you can copy it. Uh, and then you can literally just, the way I did this, I just hit return and just paste that in like so. And then just write your stuff. Now I'm just writing gibberish today for speed, but hopefully you get the idea how easy this is. Oh, I forgot to do that one. Just paste the next one in. I'll just do a few for this one. That'll do. Okay, so that's my, uh, my tick marks. And then finally under here, all I've got is uh, the buttons block. Now again, um, a shortcut to add blocks within your columns, which is really useful sometimes, is you hit forward slash, and then you can search for the block you want to add. I just want a buttons block, so I'm gonna add that in here. And then I just write the word subscribe. And I think I centered this one as well. Um, now to center a button, uh, you have to make sure you've selected the top level buttons block because you can have multiple buttons within the buttons block, if that makes sense. So just make sure you click the top one. And now up here, you'll actually be able to um, center it, okay? So we're kind of close to where we need to go. The only, the only thing I need to do is change the button um, color. So I'm gonna click on here. And when I click on that, you'll see over on the right here, I can actually change the background color. So obviously you can put any color you like in. I think I just choose that, chose that one for speed. So we're kind of there. The only other thing I want to do with this is just to add a bit of padding. So again, just make sure you've selected the actual column itself. And then over on the right, you'll see um, an option. Sorry, no, that's not right. Make sure you can select the columns block itself, the whole block. And then under columns block pro settings here, uh, you'll just be able to set inner padding like so. Okay, now I've just set 5%, you can obviously play with that. And that just sets padding around the entire uh, block like we've got there. So we're kind of getting there, okay? Now all I'm gonna do now, just for speed, is I'm gonna duplicate that block. So select the entire column, click on these three dots, and just click duplicate. And you see how they're adding across here now? I'm gonna do it one more time. And then I can just click on these blocks and delete them, like so. And now I've got my basic structure in place. If I flip back here, okay? So we're, we're kind of almost there. Obviously you, you can change the words on these very easily just by clicking in here and changing the words. But duplicating duplicating uh, will really save you a ton of time. Now the only other things I need here is I need to change the background color of this one. So I'm gonna select the block itself and I'm just gonna set the background color to that yellow color. Obviously you can choose your own color. And the other thing that we've got in here, which is quite cool, is this block here, which has got this nice sort of glow around it. Now, again, this is one of the settings that we've built into um, Gutenberg Pro is the ability to put drop shadow behind your heading. So I'm just gonna add a block. I'm gonna add the heading block. I'm gonna call it most popular. If I could spell. Uh, I'm gonna center it here. I'm gonna change the text color over on the right to white. And then the other thing I'm gonna do in heading, um, in this setting here, here, heading block pro settings, is I'm gonna add a text shadow. Now obviously you can play with this. Uh, I'm just changing these so you can see. You see how if you increase the blur, you get this nice sort of glow behind it. Uh, you can also change the font family in here. So this is part of the heading block that you can actually change the font family. That's quite funky, so I might leave it at that. Um, and you can obviously change things like letter spacing here um, and font size as well. So if you wanna make that bigger or smaller, you get the idea hopefully. And so we're pretty much there. There's just one more thing I want to do and that is just reduce the gutter or the column gap within here. And to do that, I'm gonna select the, the main columns block here. And again, this is a setting that we built in to, um, to Gutenberg Pro that lets us change the columns gap. So all I'm gonna do, you see the setting here, I can just change this slider here, in and out, like so. So if you didn't want a gap, you could you could move it in or out. I'm gonna set it at that, which is about right, and then I'm just gonna publish it. And hopefully, when I click view page, there we go, there's my beautiful looking pricing table, um, all built using the Gutenberg block editor and the Gutenberg um, Pro uh, plugin.
Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you find that useful. If you have any questions at all, uh, just pop them in the comments below. Thank you very much.